All right. This session, we're going to go ahead and we're going to open up one of these General Electric X-ray machines. Uh, this one has a short circuit in it. Um, the the B-plus transformer pulls extreme current and nothing comes out of it, so it's useless the way it is. Now, the way these things are made is they're made in two shells that go together and they're soldered in this seam here, so it's quite a job to get them open. The very first thing we're going to do is we're going to drain the oil out of it. We have a gallon jug here, and we'll go ahead and um, put the oil in that jug. The oil, if it's not contaminated with, with car charred carbon, uh, is very valuable for use for high voltage installation. To get the oil out of it, we've got a plug in it. We'll go ahead and take that plug out and drain the oil into the jug. We'll use a big funnel for that. All right, so we'll get these wires out of the way. The oil is pouring out now into the uh, funnel. We'll just go ahead and um, let that drain. It'll take about five minutes for it to all get out of there. Okay, now we have all the oil out. and You see it's most of a gallon. Um, I slopped a little of it, so about a half an inch of it or so is gone. But we got almost a gallon of it, and it looks like it's fairly clean oil, so maybe the transformer didn't arc over. We'll find out. To get it open, we're going to have to chisel this open. I've tried heating these with a torch to get them open just by uh, melting them, and that is really quite a job to do. Uh, the only success I ever had was I had two torches, I had a helper, and between the two of us, we were able to heat the thing enough to where we could get it open. But what we're going to do is we're just going to take a chisel and we're going to cut that, cut that top bead off of there. You see, as we drive the chisel in there, it breaks the solder seal. smaller chisel on the end. Alright, that takes care of that one. All we're doing is we're breaking the solder seal from the uh, from the thing. Now what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to split this. We, since we can't split it outwards on the corner, I'm going to split it and that way we can do it. I'm just going to take the chisel we now have a cut in there and that makes it to where we can split the end out. Okay, we have one half of the transformer now split out. I just took Tip it over, and we just go along and do the other side. Same thing. You can pick these x-ray heads up at junkyards, usually for about 20 bucks each. You, you just talk to the guy that owns the place, owns the junkyard, tell him you want him to save all the old x-ray machines he gets in, and you'll buy them from him. And um, you know, give him current scrap price for them. And he'll save them for you. Most of them are, are happy to get the money up front. A little bit more.
I'm going to set it up right, and I'm just going to lift. Transformer loose. Right. This is the filament transformer here. I don't see any signs of arcing on it at all. This is the expansion chamber here. They have that for uh, that keeps the air pressure from building up inside the transformer and uh, splitting the case open, causing oil leaks. Okay, now here we have our high voltage transformer. Uh, I don't see any obvious signs of arcing yet. All right. There's, there's no obvious signs of arcing here, so it's possibly the tube. Okay, here's our x-ray tube. A little bit more oil here. I'm going to pour in the bottle. The oil doesn't look particularly discolored either. So it's possible that um, it's just the x-ray tube that's arced over. Alright, we'll need a screwdriver. We'll just take a couple screws out there and the x-ray tube will come right out. These are throwaway units. They, they don't repair them. They're obsolete, so they're never used anymore. Th this particular type of x-ray machine is, is not used on humans anymore. Um, they, it puts out far too much radiation. So uh, there's the uh, x-ray tube assembly right there. All right, let's pull the tube out and see uh, what it looks like. They have one screw in the, in the bottom. It's all that holds it. it. It's cantilevered out in there, and yet I've never seen one break off. And I've seen them thrown off of trucks and stuff, yet never have seen an x-ray tube that's broken off in there, even though it's held on there only with that one little screw. The tube looks completely intact. There's no sign of arcing or anything else. That's our little x-ray tube. That's a beautiful little job, isn't it? A tube like this is capable of... Uh, Oh, 150 kilovolts. I mean, you can put 150 kilovolts on it uh, if it's under oil. Uh, you can get away with probably on the order of 75,000 uh, with it in the air. Okay. So that's how we open up one of these uh, Gendex X-ray heads. Now. 
see if we can see anywhere that we have a short here. I don't see any sign of arcing. The only way is to hook power onto it and see where the short circuit is. Because there doesn't seem to be anything wrong with it, which means we probably have a good transformer. Okay, we'll go ahead and test the x-ray tube now and see how it works. This is our setup here. We have a filament transformer with a variac hooked onto it. We have a high voltage power supply. It goes from 10 kilovolts to 40 kilovolts. Um, we've got a survey meter to make sure we don't get radiated. Um, we've got a, a fluoroscope here which is used to see the output of the tube. Okay, we'll go ahead and we'll put the tube into the housing. This housing is made out of a lead-filled plastic, and it's used to get rid of all of the stray radiation. So what we'll do, stick that in there, and we've got a screw here that goes up in there and catches that, sh that screw in the end. Might get it lined up. Okay. And we get our high voltage wire hooked to it. And our filament wires hook up just with these little quick connects. They, they, they did that very nicely in the x-ray machine so that you just pull the transformer loose and the little quick connects come right out. Okay, we're going to aim that right off into the uh, fluoroscope. Okay, and that's our, our setup. So, um, our beam will just go right straight in the fluoroscope and we've got a, a video camera hooked onto it with an image intensifier so it gives a pretty good image. Um, I'll, I'll go ahead and just stick this thing in the in the beam here. It, it'll just give a pattern of that. Okay, let me get over here onto the onto the monitor. Okay, this is the monitor. Now I'll go ahead and um, turn on the power supply. And I'm going to set it first to about 20 kilovolts. Okay, now I'm going to run the filament up and we'll see what happens. I'm just increasing the filament. Yep, there it is. We get some x-rays. Okay, we're running about 100 microamps now at 20 kilovolts. Okay, I can run it up. I'm going to run it up to 200 microamps. That's 300 microamps. That's a milliamp. Okay. Now if I run the voltage up, okay, here's 30 kilovolts. Notice we start really saturating out there. Something happens to our video here when we run that kind of voltage. I don't know what's going on there. That's 20 kilovolts again. So we get a good... Um, a good x-ray image at it. If I turn on the survey meter, we don't get any uh, get any reading. Get heck of a reading when we get into the beam. But outside the beam, you can see that uh, that plastic shield really does a good job of keeping it down. We're just reading background here. But we get just into the beam a little bit. My goodness. <laughs> it's strong. It's probably uh, you know, a few hundred milliards per hour rate on it. Maybe more than that. I'd have to calculate it to see. Okay, I'm going to shut this off so that we don't overheat the tube. And it looks like our tube is good.